XOXO, Gothic Girl. <laughs> Pose. <laughs> What's up? It's me, Audra. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, I'm not sure how you got here, but certainly I'm glad you came. And if you are new here, well, you're in for a treat. All right, if you enjoy chaotic frenetic energy and any of these things, then I suggest you go on ahead and subscribe because it's a good time. Also, here are my socials. I've been working very, very hard on condensing my intro so I don't spend 45 minutes just telling you about myself because... It can get a little awkward. Anywho, what are we with today, Audra? Well, what I'm gonna do is get unready, and I wanted to talk about something because um, it's it's on my mind, or as Bailey Syrian likes to say, it's been weighing on my noggin, and I just wanted to talk about it whilst I took off my makeup. I have had a few adult libations, but it shouldn't impair me. I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Cleansing Balm to really just start getting this off my face. I actually need to buy more of this because this is kind of the shit, but I can't buy it now because honestly, I still have my Clean It Zero. There it is. I still have my Clean It Zero from, from Vanillico and I can definitely use that. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, I wanted to talk about the workforce and how it's just like completely built for neurotypical people. Um... I <laughs> I am a neurodivergent person. I still have not been able to get my assessment for autism. And I will try to link a video where I talked about this a little bit in the live. But that being said, it's very frustrating because the American workforce, that's US American, uh, I don't want to you know, be so presumptuous because I know America, like North America is a com continent, but I think I know most people know when we're saying America, we're talking about the US and we're not trying to be like super selfish or at least I'm not. Anyway, tangent, hard to not be on. Also, if you hear my laundry, I'm doing laundry and that's really important that I do, but I wanted to film, so it is what it is. But it needs to die. <laughs> uh, because the way that the American workplace functions right now is just not sustainable or feasible the way that it, it currently is. For instance, open floor plans. For the sake of continuity, I did rinse my face with the Hadalabo Tokyo um, cleanser, which refuses to focus, but I will bring it back here and then you should be able to see it. Boom. And I also did my monthly physical exfoliant with the Minimo Glow. This is some of my favorite shit and I dig it. So that's what I did. I know people have their feelings on physical full exfoliants. I don't care, it works for me. Anywho, we were talking about open floor plans. So open floor plans, a lot of people don't know, came from companies like Google. Google's a very successful company. And one of the things that came out of that was that Google had an open floor plan but what a lot of other companies that adopted this open floor plan failed to pay attention to was that in a company like a tech company, this is important, much like in the gaming atmosphere and whatnot. Having a collaborative environment in which people can easily reach out is extremely important. And the reason it's important is because you're like, hey, what if we did blah, 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 and the other person says, yeah, 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 I can do this and da, 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 and then you work together to make that happen as opposed to being in separate offices, getting up, walking out. Usually when your mind is in a creative sphere, I would say this works for my mind as well, you want to keep that move momentum going. And it made sense there, but it doesn't make sense in every office across the United States. This is what I just used in case anybody's gonna get in my face and be like, what did you use for that? It's peach and lily. But every other company started adopting this, adopting team huddles, for instance. Why? I don't need a team huddle, okay? This daily interruption of my work, work day, like massive. I found it annoying, it was, Hey, what are we gonna talk about today? And you had to start making up things to discuss in the huddle. And you always had that one employee, and I know you know what I'm talking about, that one coworker who always had something to say, and you were like, please shut the fuck up, Janet. The rest of us want to go back and just get our work done so we can go home. And 
they've incorporated all of this stuff into these companies that don't need it. I don't need yet another interruption to my work day. Now I'm going in with the Cosrx Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. I feel like I need to do another Yes Style haul, but I just, like I feel like I need to hit up Yes Style because I'm like running low on things and I wanna try some new things. But this is what it looks like in case you're curious. All right, so as a person who is neurodivergent, open floor plans are a nightmare. Everyone speaking around me, awful. It is awful. <laughs> it makes it more difficult for me to focus and do my work. It's harder for me to be on a phone call because I could hear Margie on the phone near me and she was talking so loud and I was like, could you just shut the fuck up? And it wasn't her fault, right? She's just speaking at the volume that she speaks at. It is what it is. The problem that I ran into was that like this mentality of like this open floor plan really only invited more scrutinization by people who wanted to, what is that word? I can't remember, I'm gonna put it here. This is the mind of somebody who has ADHD. I can, I know what I'm talking about where they like don't stop bothering you and you're just trying to like get your work done and they are just always in your face. And it's like something where they're like micromanaging. I remembered, thank you for letting me get there. But like it just opened up the door for further micromanagement. Like you went from just being able to be in your office and do your job to being in this open floor plan and honestly, every single time you took one second, one moment to literally do something that you needed to do for the day, right? You're like, oh, let me go on here and confirm my doctor's appointment. Let me go on here and confirm a delivery for this fucking package. That's when your boss would inevitably walk by and be like, that doesn't look like work or, you know, the work stuck up. That doesn't look like work. And you'd be like, bitch, nobody asked you. And so the amount of micromanaging increased significantly. And what I also found interesting about this is not only did the micromanagement increase, this like super weird culture of like wanting us to enjoy our jobs. Like if I find this TikTok, I'm gonna insert it here. The expectation businesses have on their employees is like totally unfair. When I left school, I got the first office job I could get just opening doors. And I don't mean like metaphorically opening doors to new opportunities. My job was to open doors to the building and let people in. I had a performance review where they asked me what I enjoyed about the job. And I said, I like that it pays me money so that I can do what I want on the weekend. And they were like really upset about that. That was like not a good answer. They wanted me to be passionate about it. Like as if on the weekends, I was just like opening and shutting doors at home being like, oh, I can't wait till Monday where I get to do this professionally. This TikTok says everything that I've ever wanted to say, where I'm just like, excuse me, I'm not sure what you think I'm doing here, but I'm gonna tell you a good 99% of us come here because there is an exchange. You provide me money to which I can pay my bills and live my life and have a good time on the weekends. I don't care about your culture. I don't care about your pizza parties. I don't care about your award ceremonies. I don't wanna do any of that. I literally want to come in, I want to work, I want to leave. I want to make the money that I was told that I would make and I just want to go home. I don't want to go above and beyond. That's bullshit. That's really code for like, you will work for free. That's what above and beyond is. That means like you will stay late and not worry about actually getting paid overtime. They'll just continue to pay you hourly regardless, or they'll move those hours, or they'll just be like, oh, you can leave two hours early on Friday since you stayed late on Wednesday. Like that's not a benefit. I don't know why they think that that is a benefit. Like, oh, you get to leave early. I'm like, it's not really early. You just don't wanna pay me the two hours. So like, what are you talking about? This culture of like old school workers who will say bullshit to us, like Ugh, people today don't have any loyalty to their jobs. They don't have any loyalty to the company. Sir, 
you're literally giving us crumbs. You're expecting us to do more work for less money and you want us to be loyal. To what? Where are my loyalties supposed to lie? Like, I don't know where my loyalties are supposed to lie. I'm so confused why I should be loyal to a company that I have to fight just to take a day off. And for those of you that are overseas or in Europe or any of those places that give actual vacation, when US Americans say that we get two weeks of vacation, we mean 10 days. What we mean is that's 10 working days. So it's not 14 days, it's 10. And you get that for five years. And then after you hit the five year mark, they fucking bless you with another week of vacation. Excuse me? I live in a country that had to invent staycation because we were too poor to actually go on a vacation. Let that sink in. We're too poor. We've been too poor. We just don't acknowledge how poor we are. The fact that most Americans are one to two paychecks away from total financial ruin is just, I, I can't even gather that. The idea that once upon a time, a family could take their, like their, they could take their family to Six Flags. Like I'm in Texas, we have a Six Flags. You could take your family to Six Flags. That was considered a, an affordable vacation at one point in time because you couldn't go to Disney land because that had gotten way the fuck out of your range. You couldn't go to a lot of different places. You couldn't go overseas. So you were like six flags. Now even that is so expensive that it just, <sighs> I'm going to be finishing out with the elf products, their holy hydration eye cream and their holy hydration face cream, because I talked about those in the bops and flops and I just wanted y'all to be able to see it. And like, I do use this shit. So like, I wasn't lying to you, but this weird idea, this culture of like, well, we want you to like it here. Like, no, I'm not going to like it here. I'm not going to like it here. There's a number of reasons that I'm not going to like it here. But the main one is that like, if I could choose between just like living my best life and not having to do this bullshit, not having to pretend, because that's what we're having to do. We're having to pretend at these super odd corporate meetings where they are literally telling us that they cannot give us little people down here a raise. Meanwhile, the CEO got a $175,000 bonus. And you know what that bonus was for? keeping costs down. <laughs> the irony. It's actually disgusting. Like when you think about that, you're just like, so this man, cause typically it is an old white man up there. This man literally got $175,000 for helping to just denigrate, destroy, and make sure that everyone who works there can barely make enough to pay their student loans, and yet we're supposed to be grateful. Yet we are supposed to go to these weird corporate meetings and cheer about the amount of money that the company brought in. But we're not getting any raises, but of course you're gonna get your pizza party, like bae, don't worry. And on top of that, they're expecting loyalty out of people who like know that capitalism is hot garbage. We know, we know. And if you don't know, and if you're still on that capitalism is the best way, dick, here's what I'm going to tell you. If you actually think that capitalism works, you need to go on back to the 060708 crash. And you need to look at what happened there because true capitalism would have allowed those banks to fail. That's how capitalism works. The point of capitalism is that things ebb and they flow. And the market, when you say the market will correct itself, that's actually what it does. See, there was a huge boom and then there was a bubble and then it burst. And when that bubble First, the government is not supposed to step in. The government is supposed to let the decisions of these dumbasses come back to roost with them. But instead, we rescue them. Ain't that a bitch? But if that happens to the regular average person, let's say you own a business making soap and you have a 
boom and your soaps and everything's going so well and then it bursts and you're like, hey government, like my shit fell apart, can you help? They're not going to help you. They're not going to help you because you are not a corporation. Do not let that happen to you and your business because they don't give a shit about your small business. They just care about the businesses big enough to contribute to their campaigns. And that's both sides. So please don't get it twisted and think like, Ugh, she's just some liberal think piece. No, I actually do not think that either party in this country gives a fuck about us as people. And that is why we the people need to rise up and eat the fucking rich. And don't you worry, if you come into my comments with the, they worked hard for their money, I'll just delete it. Cause I'm a petty bitch, number one. But number two, they didn't, they didn't. Behind every fortune is a great misfortune. And you just need to do the research to find out. Google is free, use it, it's fantastic. It just actually boggles my mind that we are continuously pushed into a system that doesn't benefit us as Americans. When you're looking at things like unemployment, how many of you are currently still unemployed and afraid to find a job because you know, without a shadow of a doubt, that whatever company you work for is going to lie to your face as two employees, three employees, five employees, seven, are all calling out sick? They're not gonna tell you that these people have COVID. Under no circumstances are they gonna tell you. You're being exposed to these people this entire time. And then when you get it, Finally, the company might do something. They might be like, all right, y'all, we're gonna work from home for like the next three days while we disinfect the office. Meanwhile, they didn't tell you. And do you know why they didn't tell you? And this is what I'm saying, why this whole structure needs to go down and why we need to change the way that we work in America. They didn't tell you because somebody said, well, if we tell them, then suddenly everybody is gonna act like they have COVID so they can work from home for two weeks and they'll get paid. <sighs> no. That's literally what's going on behind closed doors. They're so concerned about like the one to two people in the office that are gonna fake it, that they don't give a shit about all the people who've been putting their blood, sweat, and tears in this company the entire time and would never do such a thing because even though they hate this system, they strongly believe in the company and the people that they work with and for, and their hope is that you would be honest with them. But instead of giving them honesty, you are met with distrust. You distrust your employees so much and you have to start asking yourself a very important question. Why do they distrust the worker so much? Like it seems like a lot of projection, right? You would only think that people would do nothing if given the opportunity. If you know, you would do nothing given the opportunity. All right, my face is ready. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and also do me a huge favor. Follow me on my socials, hang out with me on Twitch, hang out and like, let's do things. Listen, I know that I kind of disappear into a hole once in a while, but it's kind of needed for my mental health from time to time. I just need to like not be on all the social media. If you just want to hang out and chat and watch me play Far Cry, then come, come hang out with me on Twitch. All right, that's it. That's the video. Uh, and as usual, huge shout out to my patrons and spooky vase. Yeah. All right, you know the drill costs zero, zero dollars to be kind. And it's so good for your soul because if you don't take care of it, I'm sure it's all coming for yours. And I'm bringing Hecate with me. So until next time, XOXO. Got the girl. <laughs> Hi loves, what's up? It's me, Audra, and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new. <laughs> Every time I suck like extra spit down. <sighs> okay.